And then, John, you chased it. You chased it all the way to Bureau. So here it is at Juliet. Okay. Can I ask a question? Is Joliet Depot still existing? Yes, it is. Yep. Uh, it's no longer in use uh, as a station, but uh, actually behind the depot itself is uh, just to the left and out of the frame. Uh, Metra built a brand new uh, station behind uh, that 658 there, that second engine. So oh. uh, Metra trains no longer cross uh, the old GMO and Santa Fe here. Uh, so Metra stops and does all their work before the diamonds and they built another platform next to the tower uh, for the Amtrak trains for St. Louis. And then they also they also can they also turn the they also turn the tower into an observation uh, area. So the tower's been decommissioned, uh, but they uh, the city got the tower and it's it's an observation area now. <clears throat> How come that's blue back there, right? This looks too blue. Well, because it says the rock. Is that what it is? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Got it. Oh, that's nice. Here's the, uh, what is this now? That's Big, Big Ben. Okay. Big Ben brought up the markers. <clears throat> the rock out of the bureau. Yeah. Independent school. There's a Big Ben in the back. 20th century bureau. Yeah, that trip. Oh, I can't remember where it was going. Bureau. Bureau, okay. Hmm. Uh, naturally, you can't run an excursion without some regular freight interference. So this is a westbound, actually a weed sprayer at Manuka. Uh, in the background is the ej and &E overpass. Oh. Uh, so caught the weed sprayer right here on the close track. And then right on the other track is a westbound manifest. What's with the headlights? Oh, that's not yeah, those are, uh, not everything got them, but those are uh, what's been coined the frog eyes. Um, those two oh, extra eyes. lights will alternately alternate flash, kind of a precursor to the flashing ditch lights, but they're mounted up above the cab for extra visibility. What what uh, time of the day did train number fifty seven get out of the yard in Chicago, Blue Island? That I, I don't know. Still. That I don't know. That, I think that was probably spring. mid midday, early afternoon departure. Oh. That's especially you're chasing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then at oh, the Bureau, yeah. that special was uh, turned around on the Y, and they uh, stopped here on the Peoria side of the depot at Bureau. Uh, probably let everybody out. Um, I really dig that polka dot suit there on the <laughs> standing there, first with their back to us. <laughs> that might have been Mr. Plows. He oh. liked to dress up. Fritz Plaus. Who's that? He was the head of the 20th Century Railroad Club. Oh, was he? Okay. Around that time. All right. Uh, oh, leaving, Bureau, leaving Bureau back to Chicago under the uh, uh, big signal bridge there at Bureau. That's looking train over there. Does that impress you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a junction there in uh, Rock Island, I think. Yep. Right. This is the west end of Rock Island Yard, uh, considered terminal junction on the dry line. Uh, the Rock Island called this 28th Street. Uh, this was a conditional stop for all trains as the Rock Island, the dry line uh, all crossed here. Um, that's a uh, farm all. Uh, plant on the left. Uh, their their tractors are their final production tractors are staging for shipment there on the left. <clears throat> but, uh, this so manifest. Uh, 
Yep, this manifest is heading west. And the same spot, this time, uh, this manifest is uh, pulling west to go toward downtown Rock Island, where the other one was headed west toward the government bridge in Davenport. Uh, this train is coming out of the yard, going toward downtown Rock Island, and will actually cross uh, the dry lines Crescent Bridge and uh, actually make a detour move uh, through uh, back up to the main line of Missouri Division Junction. They would do this whenever there was a problem with the government bridge or uh, other issues on the Rock Island Arsenal that, that, that they had to get across. But, uh, the same uh, same westbound in downtown Rock Island, crossing the crossing the CB and Q slash BN and dry line uh, with the uh, uh, army armory armory in the background. Which, Did our uh, been torn down? Yeah, that uh, that armory building has been torn down. Yep. Okay. It's now a big park area. Oh yeah, I I, I remember that. Yeah. So when a manifest would detour like that, uh, a pilot engine would get on the rear and you'd see they're coupled up to the caboose, uh, helping shove the train east onto the, this guy had to actually go up toward the government bridge and take headroom on the government bridge. So the issue they were having must've been on the swing span. Um, but this is the uh, third street bridge uh, approaching the government bridge on the Mississippi River. And John, I don't know why you did it, but I'm glad you did. But you walked out onto the government bridge. Um, <laughs> oh, so I remember it all. To get this shot. So. I was completely crazier then than I am now. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. <clears throat> Is that the track that's out of service that they're rebuilding and moving and centering for wide load? Yes. Yep. So the. Double track is still in service, still in place across the government bridge today. Uh, the Iowa Interstate is currently rehabbing what they can, what they would call the siding, the track that John is standing on, uh, to uh, try to run some uh, high-dimensional uh, wind wind turbine or wind uh, windmill blades. Uh, they need to use the siding track because uh, of the extra clearances on those, on those blades. Yeah, I like that. That's fine. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's the local pool, Craig. Good tempo. Uh huh. Yep. What's this one? Another westbound and east mowing. Uh huh. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, that's quite a picture. Yep, 4507 is getting uh, getting the stenciling put on for the, like they already shot the black paint for the R and the numbers and now they're stenciling it off to spray the blue and white. <clears throat> ah. well, this is the Peoria rocket at the deep, the new depot in Peoria. Getting ready to leave Peoria. And then uh, he ended up chasing a John up to Bureau. So here it is, uh, arriving to Bureau. And probably one of my favorite happened. shots of Bureau is the, uh, after the Peoria rocket left, within 10, 15 minutes, the Quad City rocket arrived from Rock Island and did their station work and followed the Peoria rocket into Chicago. Uh, that's a diesel red dot on a building in the back there. Yep. Is that building gone now? No, it's still there. It's still there. Okay. Yep. Oh, look at the equipment though. This train. this train's got interesting equipment here. Uh, 
That was another, another Quad City rocket at uh, Sheffield. Uh -huh. Sheffield at this time was a flag stop. So it looks like there are actually a couple people standing there at the depot. Whether they stopped, I don't know, but here we are. <clears throat> Oh, that's nice. And, uh, another day, another Quad City rocket passing uh, Silvis from the highway overpass. Those LP tanks are still there today, so it's kind of fun to match up shots from today to do a then and nows with that uh, with those LP tanks. <clears throat> Going away shot with the uh, Big Ben and the Pink Flamingo Lounge. <clears throat> What's that in the background? Is that a restaurant or something? Yep, called the Pink Flamingo. A what? The Pink Flamingo. Oh, okay, okay. Uh huh. Well, that's a nice one. That's one unit. Huh. Yep, this is a. Yard job with a switcher taking a cut out, cut out of the main <clears throat> and at east. Oh, that's, that. that's nice. And then this is a nice view of the, the hump lead in the foreground and a couple of connection, connection tracks over toward the main line. Uh, the hump in the upper left corner and uh, the set of powers headed toward the uh, Headed towards the shop, the main shop building east of the overpass. What, what was this power for, right? Eric? I can't remember now. Oh, this was just a just from a freight. Uh, nothing special on this one, I don't think. Just moving from oh, okay. the uh, moving from the pump yard departure tracks to back to the engine house. Okay. And down on ground level is this. This interesting move with uh, the 942 and a Gagala power there. Not sure what, <laughs> not sure what was going on here, but uh, it's okay. Oh. Oh. I like that myself. Oh, that's nice. Now this is the rocket down in downtown or down in Rock Island at the depot. Um, must have been a charter this day with some extra cars. Required yeah. a second required a second locomotive. Uh, cold day was a cold day. Uh, yep. There's the uh... probably Probably our, my all-time favorite Rock Island shot. I know several others as well. Um, the uh, Lafayette time. mine train power with the uh, two rebuilt Jeep 18s and three, three B units, all in matching red paint. <clears throat> it's a rare shot too. Okay. There's not too many pictures of that train. Oh, you got one here. <laughs> how many five? How many years ago was that? 40, 45. So right as the uh, right as the coal train's caboose cleared, the uh, rocket went uh, flying by eastbound on the main. We got. I'm sure you were pretty nervous when this when you took this picture, but it all worked out in the end. <clears throat> oh, I remember when taking it. <laughs> well, you, you might have thought you were going to get skunky, Sam. Oh, it's probably yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, it's so long ago, I can't remember, but probably. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't move the other way. <laughs> oh, I like that one. I like that. Yeah. Another, another eastbound departing the yard with some UP pool power. Jeep 30 is no less. Jeep 30B. Huh. Well, that was, I did quite a job back then. <laughs> 
So there's a lot of people all over the country watching this stuff. Huh? Could be, maybe all over the world. Yeah, oh, I like that, that one, that's nice. Yep, down downtown Chicago, under the Roosevelt Road, that area. <clears throat> uh -huh. So Eric, uh, can I just uh, jump in here for a second to say, yes, there are, because uh, John, John had just asked, there are about 78 people uh, in uh, the Zoom meeting right now, plus a bunch of people that are uh, at the NWI meeting in person. Uh, so yeah, we have a, a pretty big audience here. And I just want to say to those who may not have caught it, um, John Jebko is, uh, is there, uh, he's a photographer here. And um, yeah, the Godfather. Seated, the Godfather. <laughs> seated with John is Ray Peacock, who um, has scanned a lot of John's photos over the years. And uh, doing the right. presentation is Eric Rasmussen. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, brief interlude. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. It has an alco hybrid. <laughs> oh, I like that one. What is that? The uh, Sears Tower over there? Yes, it is. No, Sears Tower. The Craig, Craig Willett Tower. Oh. <laughs> That's a different name? They call it the Willis Tower now. Oh. I like that one. That's a nice one. That paddle's in the back. See that? Why did that Obscar have that weird ending on it? Uh, that was something I. Uh, let's see, the car was originally built for the CNO, and then it went to the Rio Grande. And I, somewhere in there, I, I'm not sure. I think the Rio Grande put the uh, put the door in the back of the Hobbs there, and then it just stayed after the Rio. Once the Rio Grande had it, it went into private ownership, and uh, that's where we see today. Uh, this is, I believe, the South Chicago Yard. Um, some brand new cotton belt uh, tunnel motors are in transit out west. So the Rock Island delivered uh, quite a few of these, most of them actually, to the Southern Pacific and the cotton belt. They delivered these tunnel motors. You had to be careful. There was a, you get stuck in that, your head, feet get stuck in that oil in the back there. It's terrible. <laughs> On the ground, seen the back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah they they weren't known for their housekeeping back then, were they? <clears throat> oh. Only on the Rock Island. That's all I can say. <clears throat> What's that? Only on the Rock Island. Yep. Oh, there's a. Yeah. C four fifteen. Yeah. Now uh, this is on the uh, Beverly branch, the suburban branch at the hundred ninth street, hundred nineteenth street, Blue Island. Being outbound uh, commuter, making a stop. And also got an inbound with the 630. Huh. Yeah. Here's that, uh, that 406 we just saw a couple slides back in South Chicago. It was on a westbound manifest by the Vermont Street Blue Island uh, Depot with uh, three hand-me-down UP units in tow. Ah. 
4900 switch in the yard with uh, one of the IC highliners in the background. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. Back to Solis with the Lafayette mining power. <sighs> Westbound leaving Silvis Yard. <clears throat> well, I got a handle. Yeah, but this time frame, uh, early 75 and four, uh, I believe the SP and the Rock Island had a joint uh, uh, PFE train, Pacific Fruit Express train. So there's a eastbound reefer train pulling into Silvis with a run through SP power. Now this power would get plucked off at Silvis because of cap signal requirements east of Silvis. But, uh, what happened? What is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, another westbound leaving Silvis. Huh. Now back out to West Liberty. We got a south slash eastbound train coming out of Cedar Rapids. Uh, Going to head east toward uh, Davenport and Silvis. And then uh, some of these uh, Rio Grande hand-me-downs. Uh, one of them was working, uh, working a local there at West Liberty. Uh, it's running northbound on the BCRNN crossing the uh, east-west main line. Station's still there. Yes, it is. Yep. It fix up the roof, I think. <laughs> yeah, I believe the uh, West Liberty Chamber of Commerce or the historical uh, society uh, currently occupies the depot. Uh -huh. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, westbound at uh, at Alyssa with uh, two of the mine train B units. Uh, that twelve seventy five later became uh, had a nice checkered history. With ended up uh, working for the Iowa Winter State for. A number of years uh, before eventually being sold off in the early 2000s when all or I'm sorry, the, um, 2008 when all the GEs arrived. So it's kind of neat to see uh, 1275 on quote home rails when even our winter state had it. So. Oh. This is westbound on the east west main at West Liberty. Yeah. That signal is gone, probably, right? Yes, that okay. train order signal is gone. Uh -huh. Actually, it, uh, I believe that's the one that uh, when the city of Wilton uh, rebuilt the depot in Wilton, they came over. At that point, the West Liberty Depot was abandoned. So they, they actually stole the train order signal here from West Liberty and moved it to Wilton. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dave, oh, here's one for you. Right? Southbound at uh, Southbound at Shortline Junction. <clears throat> there in Des Moines. <clears throat> uh, in the early seven, yep. Yeah, in the early seventies, the Rock Island ran uh, football specials uh, from Rock Island and Davenport to Iowa City. For the University of Iowa uh, football games. Yeah, uh, so this is one of those specials getting ready to loading up there in downtown or at the depot in Rock Island. Kind of a nice shot with the family there taking a look Can at you. Read that one? 
crossing a, a from somebody. I can't read it. Same cold day. Same, same, same. Yeah, looks pretty cold that day. <clears throat> Uh, same train, same football train passing the Iowa City Depot westbound. Another different uh, football train passing the depot at West Liberty. Iowa football wasn't exactly really good then. You know better than I do. There's a pretty nice westbound at uh, the Farnham Crossing in Davenport. Uh -huh. I got it, yeah. That's a good shot. They loaded people up here. Yep. This time, this time I actually did load people here on Fifth Street in Davenport. Is, is this where it started from, Eric? I wonder. Uh, this one might have, yeah. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, it's got some of the uh, commuter cars. Yeah, they grab, they grab whatever cars they could out of the run these trains. Another westbound leaving Silvis. The U-boats weren't as common. Uh, these U-30s weren't as common there in Silva, so it's kind of a neat catch to see those. I have one. A couple, of, a couple of real grand Jeeps getting some service at Silva. Quick visit up to Cedar Rapids. Um, the old maroon, dip, the old maroon dip paint job was literally a dip right over the old uh, barber pole paint job. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's nice. Couple movements here at Cedar Rapids. What's that third unit there? That's one of those Rio Grande Jeeps. Oh, it's one of those, okay. Yep. Did those Rio Grande units stay around for a while? Uh, for a little while. I think they were probably one of the early ones in the rebuild program, but I'm not for certain on how long they stuck around actually. <clears throat> uh -huh. I don't know. That's in uh, Cedar Rapids, I believe. Yep. Oh, I like that one. He's found at the depot in Iowa City. Uh, running west, uh, westbound and downtown Davenport. Another, another train headed toward uh, or Denver or toward Omaha in the UP. <clears throat> yeah, it's a UP unit in fact there, I see. Looks like it. Hmm. There's a, another view of the mine train power at Silvus. 
right next to the wash rack. Hmm. Oh, the, that's not, quite a rack, huh? Yeah, not sure what happened here, but uh, yeah. Did we build this thing? Eric, did they rebuild this? I don't know. I think they might have. It actually could have, <laughs> might have turned into a, this one might have turned into one of the slugs. I'm not sure. Hmm. So just so everybody knows, John moved to the Quad Cities around 1970, what was it? Three. 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 Yeah, it was um, July 73, I think it was. So he's a guy from the East Coast shooting all this Pennsylvania Railroad stuff and then comes to do the Rock Island when he moves to the middle of the country. Yeah. Must have been a change. Oh, I don't no know. No more wires. I am. Hey, I'm from the land of the no more, G. No more GG one. I'm from the land of the GG one, you know, Ray. That's my favorite. <laughs> there are you 30s on the street running in Davenport? Because John worked for the uh, United States Department of Army, uh, he was an employee working out in the East Coast in the. Uh, late 60s and they brought him out for some training in the quad city so it wasn't his first time shooting <laughs> the rock island that's there. right they paid for my trip and a stay but eventually he moved there he didn't know it at the time but he was uh, there well you know it i like that one that's a nice one that's a unit. this is down a, down in it's the nice. background is uh nahant yard milwaukee roads nahant yard so this was the Rock Island's main line passing right by the Milwaukee Road yard there on the joint trackage. Yeah, that's an F9 in the front. So when John had to talk his beautiful wife from West Orange, New Jersey into moving into Davenport, Iowa, he said, come on out, there's Rock Island trains to shoot here. <laughs> Did I say that? I don't remember. Hey, this is nice, look at this one, right? Yeah, this is a football train at, uh, this is the Missouri Division Junction with the uh, Main line split to Des Moines and Kansas City. Uh -huh. I like that Crisco car there, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, got the same same train there at the I junction like and down at the Buffalo. <laughs> Mississippi River there on our right. Yep. Look at that, the wash rack is actually in use at Silvis. <clears throat> yeah, nobody ever bought them in a rock on. They were all very friendly people. And I like that. I used to call up the crew call and find out what time the eastbound was going to run on Sunday afternoon. And he would tell me. Another westbound on 5th Street, Davenport. Fair line for this one. The westbound down at what I believe to be is Linwood. Um, Where? Linwood, down uh, between Davenport and Buffalo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I think maybe you're right with those cars in the back there uh, to the right. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, here's a, uh, a coal train power on there. Yep. Just have coal Detroit trains Edison. on there. Oh. Uh, Detroit Edison, I think it was. Another football train headed west. Right back memories, right? Huh. There's one of the Detroit Edison units. 
Yep, by itself up by at the Farnham crossing, crossing Duck Creek. Uh, Eric, what do you know about this Detroit Edison train? Uh, uh, they, I think at this time, at this time, the Rock Island was leasing, uh, just leasing these units. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yep. I can believe that. Oh, I like that. That just stands out. So as Ray mentioned, this is summer of 73, right when John moved into the back to Davenport. Yeah, I moved here uh, July that year yeah. with my missus. The government paid for our trip to come out and look for houses to live in. <laughs> the air transport, and, and we got paid for the lodgings too. <laughs> Wait till we tell the story someday of Gloria Roselle Jevko. She got quite the story, what, a, what quite a woman. What? She had to put up with John. <laughs> well, anybody who puts up with John is uh, careful, brave. Careful, careful, careful. Brave. Can I say that? Brave. Look at that. <laughs> oh, the B units, yeah. That's it. That's in the uh, GP. 30B. Yeah. Jeep 30B, a Jeep 9B, and a Century, Alco Century leading. The dependable transportation era. Yep. Uh -huh. That's what my GP20 said on it that I got from Tyco in about that era. era. Huh. Maybe 10 years earlier. Well, I got that one right oh, um, Early, well, this is Rock Island Depot. In 1971, you made a quick visit. Must have had more training in Rock Island before you actually moved in. So it's like you had a few. He, oh, he had a few days. Yeah. Uh, must have had a weekend to uh, run around town. <clears throat> yeah. That's missing something. <laughs> yeah. Not much. I like that. That was a nice proving that they did wash their locomotive. Yes, yeah. they did. That's a good April Fool's picture right there. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. A rocket down on Rock Island again, getting ready to head east that morning. Yeah, I mean, let's stay and turn the train around. I don't know why. And there's that 1275 past the uh, Davenport Depot. Oh. Uh, Davenport Station was uh, demolished in uh, 1973. Ah, oh. I have to be just in time, right? Now we go back to 1967. Uh, this is the West End of Rock Island Yard of an Eastbound Manifest coming into Rock Island. Before the uh, Yellow Nose era, everything was chevrons. Huh. At uh, Meta, Meta West local, they're, they're at the depot. Oh. And over to the uh, the Avonport Depot for a few trains there. Mm -hmm. uh, this Where's was Rock train? Island's the shop train. <laughs> Back in the 60s, they ran this as a K 
commuter train for shop employees out to Silvis, ran from Davenport to Silvis. I bet you're at Davenport Station. There yep. wasn't much of that to ever taken, I think. I wonder where that sign is. Oh, look at this. That's nice. Brand new post office vans. <clears throat> and uh, westbound, I believe it'd be the, I don't know if, it, I don't think it was named at this point, but it'd have been the Corn Belt Rocket going to Council Bluffs in Omaha. Uh -huh. A few blocks west of the depot, is this westbound? Yeah. Here's the shot of the Golden State for you, John. <clears throat> In the summer, you could catch the Golden State eastbound in the late late evening light. <clears throat> John, you're, John and Ray, you're muted. <clears throat> we got a we got a caregiver here. It's ready to take care of John for a couple of minutes. So we're gonna put it on mute here. But okay. we'll be listening. All right. Uh, so this is uh, the Corn Belt Rocket again at, at the depot in Davenport. Uh, this time, John was actually gonna go for a ride. So uh, must have been a weekend. He was a uh, weekend. He was in, in the Quad Cities that had a free weekend. So he took a ride on the Corn Belt Rocket, uh, got off at Iowa City, ran up to the power, get a shot of the power at Iowa City. And a uh, view of the station work at Iowa City. And then uh, at Des Moines, the power would cut off and uh, the switcher at Des Moines would uh, work the uh, head end express cars. So with, uh, with a new, uh, new TOFC flat on the head end, the head of that VersaPak uh, containers, the Corn Belt Rockets looks like it's getting a load of US mail as well. <clears throat> So then John laid over in Council Bluffs the next morning, uh, went to the Rock Island Yard, got a couple rosters of power sitting in Council Bluffs. Uh, then that morning, the uh, eastbound Corn Belt rocket headed back toward uh, Davenport and Chicago S and uh, I believe it's Grove Tower there in Council Bluffs, uh, just leaving the depot in Council Bluffs. And then from there, John took a Greyhound down to Kansas City and uh, set up camp about uh, a few miles east of Union Station in Kansas City. Uh, some friends of mine helped pinpoint this as uh, uh, one of the crossing just east on the Kansas City Terminal, east of the depot. Uh, so he had shots of Santa Fe, Missouri Pacific, Milwaukee Road, Kansas City Southern, and uh, Rock Island down here. So uh, this is a Eastbound, um, not sure which train it is, but the eastbound leaving Kansas City. Uh, eastbound manifest leaving Kansas City. And a westbound with a uh, rebuilt FA with the uh, EMD trucks underneath it. Uh, 
And here's the Golden State leaving Kansas City with the, the mix of SP power. Go Kansas City Municipal Stadium. Yep. Where? Is it? Where's that? It's over to the left. The light standards are not in view there, but it's just to the left. Oh. Ah. And back up in Davenport for the last few pictures here, the uh, butcher here crossing Rockingham Road on the Golden State route, uh, just west of the west of the Missouri Division Junction. Even John quite the eye eyeful right here. Oh. Right at the same spot, uh, westbound, headed toward Kansas City. And uh, Golden State Limited, eastbound at Rockingham Road in Davenport. Two SP units are not coming back. Yep. I rode that train from Davenport to Chicago. Well, not. No, no, not this one. But one, one Friday, I went to see a girlfriend there, in Chicago. Then. Uh, Westbound manifest at Missouri Division Junction. As you can see here in 67, the switches used to be, uh, used to be a diamond from the westbound main crossing the eastbound main down to Kansas City. Uh, in the earlier pictures, you can see it was just a pair of switches. Uh, so at this point, uh, back in the good old days, I suppose you'd say it was a much more streamlined junction. Uh -huh. You even got a Pennsylvania boxcar there for you, John. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yep. And that's all I had put together. So uh, as the sign at Silvis used to say, have a good day. Make sure your seatbelts are fastened. You're about to enter the most dangerous area on earth, the public highway. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, Eric, for putting this together. That's so we could all enjoy it. I enjoy it, certainly. Bring back some memories. <laughs> Okay. It's wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Ray. Uh, thank you all for uh, for doing this uh, program tonight, the joint program for the Wisconsin and the NWI chapters of the. We could have, we could have more of these if you want sometime. Why don't we have more of these sometime? That's a great idea. <laughs> That's an yeah. excellent idea. Ray uh, did uh, did me a favor here, and he uh, he actually he took a picture of of John um, <laughs> watching, and I you know look at look at the the joy on on John's face of being reunited with his pictures after all these many years. Uh, what a what a, a fabulous job you did, Eric! Thank you for this uh, tonight. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you I for like the opportunity. The okay. Yeah. And uh, what we'll do here is, um, do we have any questions for John or Eric or, or Ray? Did I hear um, Ray say that the Sheffield, Illinois Depot has been torn down? That wasn't me. Yes, that's correct. The Sheffield Depot was torn down. Uh, it's been about seven or eight years now. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Eric, what do you scan your slides with? I use a, a Nikon Cool Scan uh, 5000, I think it is. Had it for about 15 years now. It's still cranking out good slides. It's very I nicely use, done. Uh, yep. I use, uh, I use a view scan uh, software in conjunction with it and then Photoshop to touch everything up. <clears throat> hey, Great. Eric, why don't why, why can't we have a show like this every year for a different location, maybe? Yeah, we I can guess. do this more often, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think other people would, too. I think speaking uh, speaking on behalf of the Wisconsin chapter, I think we would uh, we would love to to uh, participate with uh, with NWI again uh, in, a, in a virtual meeting like this again next year or whenever the appropriate time is. Uh, 
you know, hey, can I just see uh, some reactions? Uh, anybody want to give us a thumbs up if that's a if that's a decent idea? Yep, you see some thumbs going up. Thumbs up? Yeah. yeah, I got thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up <to> <laughs> Wonderful. Someday, someday I would like to set up a, uh, uh, we'll call it a, uh, a college of uh, young, enthusiastic slide scanners that want to really get into processing. Because Eric and myself have done the bulk of John's slide scanning, but it's a very laborious process. And he's got a lot of slides for the world to see that he wants to show. There are a lot. I've had to skip over quite a bit just to get what I want for various things. But yeah, there is a lot of material there to scan. Exactly. Okay. Hey, Ray, uh, Ray, can you do us a favor and kind of tilt the computer uh, towards you so we can see your face for a moment there? Uh, are this, you sure you uh, want to see that? Yeah, we do want to see that. That's Ray Peacock, everybody. Uh, he's, uh, you know, obviously a very close friend of John. Uh, Ray is the administrator of the GodfatherRails.com website as well. Uh, you did many of the scans, and that's oh, back to the 1950s, right? Yeah, and I, um, well, I gotta, I gotta give John credit because 20 years ago, he, in my opinion, of all the legacy photographers of railroad material, he was really out in the forefront about wanting to let his slides be seen by a digital generation that had, had never shot any slide film or knew anything about slides. And uh, he had all this material and he was cool enough to, to say uh, yes when I asked him if we could build a website for him. And, uh, you know, uh, the, well, our, our late friend Tim Fulbright would always say, uh, Godfather brings some golden oldies to the slideshow. So when we built his website, I said, why don't we just call it Godfather Rail since that'd be easier for you to tell your friends out in the field when you're out taking pictures instead of, you know, Jebco with a D-Z-I-O-B-K. What, what, how do you spell that? What is that? So anyway, that's how we came up with it. Thanks, Tim Fulbright. That's wonderful. And the Quad City Mafia. Yeah, the Quad City Mafia. Yeah, people actually thought there was one out in Chicago. <laughs> they were afraid to come out there. <laughs> I remember that. It was funny. It was so funny. Uh, wonderful. <laughs> Any other questions for uh, for for John or for Eric or for Ray? Well, again, round of applause for you guys. Uh, hat tip to you guys for for making this happen, and 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 thank you all to. All the participants, uh, the uh, the eighty or so folks who were in the in the room with us tonight, the folks that are in the room, the physical room there at uh, the NWI meeting, Jerry, thank you again for uh, for helping helping make this happen. Uh, this was a this was an excellent idea, and I, I'm 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 glad it turned out really quite perfectly. We'll have to do it what? again very soon, once a year at least, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Well, Mike, I think you and I ought to uh, Eric, thank put, you. put our thoughts together and uh, see what we can come up with. Eric, thank you for putting this together. You're welcome, John. I'm glad you're able to join us tonight. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it all. This was uh, this was a treat, John, that uh, that 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 you could join us, and uh, and again, Ray, uh, thank you so much for making that happen. You're welcome. We took a chance. We figured we'd try to do this after visiting hours and ask for forgiveness later, but so. Far so good.